Nigeria is currently going through one of its worst unemployment crises in recent times. This is according to a new report by the World Bank. It also noted that the socio-economic challenges facing Nigerians over the last 10 years have led to an astronomical increase in the number of citizens seeking asylum and refugee status in other countries. In the report titled Of Roads Less Travelled, assessing the potential for migration to provide overseas jobs for Nigeria's youth, the World Bank further estimated that there were 2.1 million internally displaced persons in Nigeria in 2020 alone. Now, joining us to discuss this is Gospel Obele, and he's an economist. Thank you very much, Gospel, for joining us. Thank you, Marianne, for having me. Yes. Um, I know that you're not a politician, but you have the statistics for all of these things. One of the, one of the key things that the, this government of Buhari um, campaigned on is to cut short you know, the level of unemployment in Nigeria and you know, uh, help young people to get access to jobs, other than the fact that they were also going to build the economy and fight corruption and fight insecurity. And here we are in 2021, while we are facing a Twitter ban and, of course, other issues of insecurity, food shortage, we also are dealing with unemployment at its peak. Um, what does this really say about our government and how we're dealing with issues of uh, the teeming population, which is mostly, if not 60 percent, youth? Well, I, I don't think that... Um the government of the day, or to a very large extent, the political economy, and that's speaking across um, administration. Um, so we don't make it look as though it's a question of the government of the day. Yeah. Um, across the political economy, there have been a very huge uh, poor leadership when it comes to dealing with the Nigerian unemployment um, um, problem. And that's because, and I have also um, engaged as, as a different, at different levels within government um, social intervention programs, all right, on how it's dealing with employment. I would say confidently that all of the policies, majority of the policies that we've brought out has been, has been designed to patch the problem, all right, rather than deal with the problem from a root causal point of view, all right, to rule out initiatives thinking that that initiative will be able to, you know, um, get millions or provide millions of jobs and all that. And you realize at the end of the day, it looks as though the statistics are worsening, all right? Technically speaking, unemployment um, is around almost 33 to 35 percent right now, and then underemployment is around 28 to 29 percent. If you combine both together, it's almost 60 percent in a sense. And that's to tell you that we're doing a very good job in terms of um, ensuring that our youth, all right, are gaining access into mainstream, all right, mainstream productive jobs, not just jobs. So it's a very big question for the political economy. And in my own opinion, I think it's lack of public leadership in dealing with this big question. Yes, because I was talking to some people within the week and, and, and I said, we were very quick to put all our problems or, you know, drop the ball at the feet of the presidency. Yes, the presidency does have his job cut out for it. But then we fail to look at the people who directly work or serve us. I'm talking about governors. I'm talking about local government chairmen. And I'm talking about, you know, the people who take gov who are closest to us in governance. Um, when we look at the budgets of states, um, and I'm talking about all the 36 states, including the FCT, uh, in terms of education, does it scratch even the surface of the SDG goals for education in, in Nigeria or in, in, in the world generally? Um, how much are we putting into education? And when we talk about um, infrastructural development and industries or opening up uh, spaces that would employ young people, how much is devoted to that? Because uh, on the other hand, people are also advocating for open budgets and, and we hardly have access to these budgets. We only hear the names that they're christened with and the bogus amounts that these budgets are made of. But when it comes down to the nitty gritty, um, are the people really carried along and, and do, do these budgets reflect on people oriented programs that can really put food on tables? All right, Miriam, this, this question has been a very big um, question across board. And I would speak to the reasons why I mentioned public leadership at, at the initial, um, at my answer to the initial question. Now, public leadership cuts across from the federal level to the state and to the local government level. Now, that said, the argument for increased budget sides, all right, has been in the mainstream for a very long time, all right? And technically, it's a fair argument because we're not even developing, devoting 
the required, um, I think, United Nations um, 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 threshold, you know, talking about about 26% of your budget should be devoted towards education. All right. We don't, we're not even close to that. Now. I think we are around 8% there, about hovering around that space and all that. But, because I, I've realized that I've done a lot of intense work on the demand and supply side of, of unemployment and skills gap analysis and all of that for tier one organization, I've come to realize that even if the Nigerian budget were to be giving 30%, all right, on education and employment and all of that, you still realize that it may not significantly cut down because the problem is not so much around funding than it's, it's about trying to, be under, trying to understand the complexity around uh, this unemployment issue in the sense. Mm -hmm. Now, there are different pockets and different perspectives of the problem. That's why I talked about the policy angle, first of all. All right, until we understand the different contributory elements to this menace, all right, no matter how much you have on the table, it will still be funds that will go down the drain because you may not be able to deploy funds as a policy instrument, all right, if your policy design in the first place is wrong. So no matter how much you want to devote to budget, which is a good argument, all right, if the design work is not properly done, so to take, for instance, the Empower, it's a patchy policy. It doesn't deal with the, with, the, with the unemployment challenge at the root causal level. When you talk about dealing with the unemployment challenge, there's an education perspective, all right? There is that individual perspective, all right? There is a poverty trap within the system, all right? Poverty trap simply means that um, psychological perspective that the culture and behavioral pattern of a, of a people all right, have done to the esteem of its young people in a sense. All right, there are also the, the, the angle of, of youth restlessness. All right, there's a perspective around education institutions and many other angles. There are parents who do not even understand what it's required in terms of human capital development and their roles. So there are different pockets to dealing with this unemployment. And what we see now as unemployment are problems that have built over the years from a root causal angle. So increasing the budget now may not make any significant, all right? It's just one out of a very wide pool of uh, all right, cluster of solutions we need to look at to dealing with this thing, especially from a design angle. So the, the way you sound, and I might be wrong, please correct me, is that maybe these leaders of ours do not understand what the problem is in its entirety, and just throwing money at it might not solve it. Uh, but, but... If they do know what the problem is, and they, I mean, I, I want to believe that they do because they campaign on these things. Like I said, I made an example of the president, Buhari, when he was coming into office. And this is detail for governments, previous governments. I mean, they come and go. But this particular government was very clear in its three-point agenda as to what it wanted to change uh, in Nigeria. So obviously these people do have an idea of what we need in this country. But my question is, why does it seem so much of a, a, a mirage? It seems like it's rocket science for them to even, because you have to start somewhere. We're not saying that we want a full blown thing to happen in one day, but why does it seem so difficult for them to at least start something or address the, the problems from the, the root cause? Uh, because we can't keep saying the same thing. I mean, every single time we talk about this, whether it's next year, the year after, we still come back to the root cause of the problem. And nobody seems to be addressing it. But then we just, you know, pour water on it and then hope that it gets it, it trickles down to the bottom. So really, do you have an idea why it, there's so many bottlenecks or the fact that it's not even being addressed? All right. To be very honest, all right, a lot of people think, and this is not just the Nigerian government alone right now. When you think you talk about unemployment, unemployment is a general problem. Anybody can come and say unemployment, develop policy manifestos around that, and uh, choose to sound intelligent around how it should be solved. All right, there are literally one or two, three, four, five solutions you can think from the top of your mind. All right, that's one. Now, secondly, the big question is, are those the right solutions, all right, being the fact that have we properly understood what the problem is? And I can put a bet to you seriously that a lot of the people who think they understand what the human capital needs or unemployment challenges is, only have and understand the problem is not really what the problem is. How much of intense, sincere 
vigorous research has gone into understanding Nigerian unemployment problem. That's number one. And then understanding the skills gap in the sense. All right. So even private sector leaders, and with all due respect, even human resource managers who sit in big corporations, even people who administer tests, uh, uh, aptitude tests and all of these things, all right, think they know what the problem is all right, when it comes to them. So it's not a government problem alone. The Nigerian ecosystem and its players around human capital development within corporates and even ex in, the, in, in other spaces think they understand what the problem slash under, underemployment problem is. All right. They are deep perspectives to this problem and because we are not a nation given to research all right and critical policy engaged research in the sense all right we are not being able to handle issues at a root causal level mm -hmm. so anybody can talk about unemployment and rollout manifestos and guess what the numbers are worsening off even rollout social intervention programs all right some people go as far as um, paying Nigerian youth some certain number of salary under a government, it doesn't solve unemployment mm. because people writing the manifestos and those who are executing it do not have an understanding around what the base root causal, all right, critical issues are and the dynamics to these problems. Parents don't even know, all right. So it's it's a, it's an interesting perspective because going forward, in the sense, in my own opinion. All right, the, the conversation and perspective should be how do we understand this thing at the root causal level? Mm -hmm. Do the rigorous work we need to do, all right, and begins to begin to define priority areas within the root causal space, all right, and identify how institutions need to work together to begin to deploy solutions around this thing. So it's gonna be a cluster of you know, all sorts of um, honesty, dirty work in quotes, all right, mm -hmm. to get unemployment out of the window. Then again, there's a big monster called underemployment. Meaning that people are earning and working below their capacity. That's a huge problem, a huge monster in the room that nobody's talking about at the moment. And that's about 26% right now. All right, so th these are the big questions we need to um, answer ourselves. Because the, the, the conversation around human capital development borders heavily on understanding context mm -hmm. and the different dynamics at the root causal level that impacts those numbers you know, year on year and year on year. All right, okay. how many businesses, how many human resource managers can tell exactly from an empirical standpoint how COVID-19 has affected their talent management and talent workforce? Well, this is what this, this is one of the things that was cited in this uh, World Bank report because he talked about you know the impact of COVID nineteen also on businesses on the people. It's also talked about uh, migration, and we've seen in the space of six months how many people have engaged in proper migration. By the way, I'm talking about people who have taken their families away from this country through the right channels, and then we have also seen a rise in irregular migration as a result of people looking for greener pastures as they have been frustrated in the country uh, that they would call their home. Um, so as much as we keep reading in these figures, we're getting close to an election year. As much as you say that, you know, it's a dirty work, people need to engage more, people need to be educated, they need to, you know, get a deeper understanding. Uh, the voters themselves need to also have some fair knowledge as to what they should be requesting from the politicians because the time is nigh. They're going to come for our votes. Uh, and if this is where we are right now, what should we be asking for? May I, the big, the, 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 there's a big confusion on the table. Should I be very honest with you? Number one, the political economy and all those who will be running for elections in 2023 do not know what the root causal and the real problem is. And in 21st century economic development, if you cannot define what the social problem is, I'm not talking about the definition but, of But, but Gospel, that's I'm why we have, that's why they're technocrats, that's why they're teams. The governments always come, you know, I don't know about this government, but the governments so, have, that, that's what I'm governments saying, have technocrats even, and they have experts. And, and then we have an economic team that builds an economic that, framework that's every saying. single year yeah, for yeah. the country. What constitutes of that framework? There has to be some intelligible yeah, yeah. people on that table. Yeah, Miriam, that's what I'm saying, that the cluster of people within those things, and even, as I mentioned, human, human resource managers within organizations cannot really define the problem. So it's not a function of government anymore. Even the people who are saying that they should hold government account accountable do not are not even interested to understand enough because there's also what you call citizen participation and citizen agenda setting. It means that how commercially aware are the citizens in that country enough to hold government accountable? And I'm not talking about just holding placards, going for protests, or tweeting and, and talking about this thing. I'm talking about how much of empirical, detailed. All right, organized work 
is being done, all right, to push advocacy forward. That's what I'm saying. I'm not talking about um, um, all these institutions around that shut and advocacy. No, 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 no. I'm talking about intense R and D focus every year. I engage at least almost three thousand um, youths when it comes to unemployment and understanding skills gap. And I've had a detailed report around these things. It will shock you to know that a lot of professors, a lot of people who sit on these conferences, a lot of people who sit on panels, a lot of people who work in government things and who would work as technical assistants to the next set of uh, um, uh, public leaders that will show up in 2023 do not have an idea. And the citizens also, so how would citizens who do not have an idea call the government who also does not have an idea? So the truth is that we are in this for a long haul. We are not a personally disciplined people who are looking for the right solutions to the to the problems. And I'm afraid, I don't mean to sound negative on this show tonight, but I'm afraid it's going to last for a long time until wow. there is a key, uh, until there's a major change in the mindset of people, all right, both at the followership level and at the leadership level, we may not be able to tell ourselves the honest things when it comes to ways through which we need to redesign our policies and our drive for change. All right. I'm, I'm not talking about motivation and all of that. It's critical research based root cause out, finding root cause out uh, um, reasons. And, all right. I'm building a mechanism around how we move people from underemployed or unemployed to self reliance, you know, and productive human capital base of the country. And, and that's a very big question right here. Well, thank you uh, very much. Gospel Bailey is an economist, but then uh, it looks like we're going to have tough times ahead, unfortunately. But uh, thank you for Definitely. opening our eyes to this. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me as always. All right. Well, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, I will give you my take. I'm at a loss for words because... Um, on one hand, we're um, dragging and pulling uh, with a government that is unable to understand the yearnings of the people and, and, and come to their aid. And on the other hand, we also have a people who really do not understand how to engage its government, does not understand what to bring to the table, and does not even understand um, that they have the power to get their government to be accountable. So we're in between a rock and a hard place. So let's stop wasting our time to watch, and I'm not saying don't watch Nollywood or don't watch um, action movies from Hollywood, but maybe we should start reading. Maybe we should start digging deep. Maybe we should start concerning ourselves with the things that have to do with our future, like governance, the nitty gritties, the questions that need to be asked, the people that we need to start pushing to be in the forefront of our leadership. We cannot have empty heads leading us not understanding what the, they, we, the people, need, uh, but then they want to foist on us what they think we need. We need to begin to align our differences. We need to also come together. Let's find that thing that brings us together as a people. We all have a unity of purpose, and that unity of purpose is to push this country ahead, to develop this country in, in leaps and bounds. We cannot continue to run around in circles. We're too much of a giant to be this bad, this destroyed. We, we, I mean, Nigeria seems to have lost all of its glory. And why? Because even the people that call themselves Nigerians have given up hope. You can't throw in the towel. It's time to start digging, ask questions, do researches. You don't have to be a professor or a scientist to do research. Read something other than that novel that you like. Find out how we can change this Nigeria because we're going to do it together. You cannot leave it to that politician because who knows? You may be known even better or more than that politician. But we as followerships, uh, followers, I beg your pardon, need to strengthen our knowledge of governance so that we can engage the people that we call our leaders. I am Mary Anna Cohn, thanking you for watching. Do have a good evening.